no hard impact Past painful scars, in fact I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions, fact don't ask Grab reactions, jacked attack with every word Then act with class as they hear me snap I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce I ain't lost, I'm finally loose, pick a new so for excuse I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used Everybody wants a piece now, y'all can rest in peace Now you're dead to me, so peace out, remember you're discreet now Get ready for defeat Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirisho here, and now, whenever we last left off with this series, Izuku Midoriya, who is at the age of 12 years old, and his mother, he has discovered that he has family outside of Japan. And he does hope to one day meet them. Along with that, you also do have Inko. Her and Asashi have devised a plan. After hearing about the supply drops, they're going to try and ambush some people. They at least know where the supplies are going to be dropped off at. And then there is, well, the problem that... If they don't get the proper supplies they need to, and make what they need to make, then it's not going to work. Now, the ingredients that they need to make these things, I will not be listing. Because the fact is that you could, if you wanted to, make them at home. They're very dangerous things, and I am not going to be held responsible in case anyone does try and make them. Along with that, I am fairly certain that I would end up on a watch list, just for listing them in a video. Anyways, just know that it's basically going to be like homemade napalm, homemade mustard gas, and actually I believe I might be wrong, but I don't believe I am. I believe napalm does burn very hot, like a fire. That one thing about something else. Hmm. Anyways, I won't be listing those ingredients. Now, along with that, let's begin. After they got these ingredients all put together and somewhat ready, you do have Inko. The day they are going to go out, she left with a few people. Ones that she knows won't be able to be easily detected by the volatiles and other infected. They are going by rooftops. And it is hopefully not going to end badly. And Midoriya. He did want to follow his mother. However, Sashi did state that this would all be dangerous. And that if he does go, that, well, there's a chance that he might get hurt or injured and possibly even bitten and infected. Now, with that being said, let's cut over to Inko. As soon as her and everyone do get into position, and begin to wait, there is a supply drop. It has been roughly about an hour. Infected have not found them, and as long as they do keep at least moving around and staying out of sight, no one really suspects anything. Now, as these supplies do drop and land, they are waiting. Right now it is sunrise, and the infected, they are already getting less and less violence. Plus, there is at least a bomber down there, along with what they believe to be a, well, running zombie. The ones that don't like to interact with people. They usually do scrounge around for any spare meat. And... As soon as the sun does begin to rise, they do at least themselves take off. Now, with that being said, eventually these men do begin to show up. And after putting the active ingredients in the inactive ingredients, Inko tosses a bottle off of the rooftop. As soon as it smashes into the ground, it already does begin to react and hurt these people. These people are trying to fire off of the rooftop where they believe it came off of, or at least at the building. 
other people throwing in their own ingredients. And hurting and actually getting these men to drop their weapons. The infected, they take care of the rest. Since these men, they didn't really have a chance to try and defend themselves. After that does happen, Inko and everyone in do actually begin to look through the, throughout the vehicle after a after the infected are cleared. That is what I'm trying to say. And they then begin to at least inspect some things. Now, on the radio they do hear that their guys over there, they got the other supply drops. And they're actually quite curious as to where, let's say, Bravo team, or Foxtrot team is. They want to know exactly where they're at. Someone was supposed to have radioed in already. They got the supplies, right? Now, they do pick up the supplies and put them on their truck. And Inko actually does drive this giant truck back to their base. It actually surprising quite a few of them. And it's pretty shocking. What the hell? Now, while well, everyone who is of the older generations is surprised, the kids are pretty confused. Why is that thing moving? How is it moving? They haven't seen a vehicle move like that in a very long time. And Inko actually is trying to explain it to Midoriya. They're not sure how these men had a working truck like this. However, this is obviously a military military vehicle from the looks of it. So either these men are form are former Japanese military, or quite possibly may have found a place with a working vehicle. And took it from them. Along with that, there's the fact that they have a radio inside the truck. Now, Inko is saying that it could be any of these possibilities. However, Hisashi, he himself goes on to state that, actually, in all likelihood, they may have been able to find the proper parts. Any one of those broken down Humvees, or let alone military vehicles, or anything on the highway, like a bus you could fix and scavenge parts from. So most likely, with all the checkpoints around the country, they were either lucky enough to find good tires, a good body, and, if it's even possible, an engine. In fact, the thing might be salvaged on the inside. He says walking around, and going to open the hood. Now, after a bit of a struggle and looking inside the, well, driver's side of the door, they are able to find out how to pop the hood. As soon as they do, they can see the engine. Hasashi is right about some things. Some of the pieces in here, some of the things he is seeing, yeah, they're clearly old. But the thing is runnable. In fact, this looks like something he himself could have made. So, if they're able to find vehicles, he might be able to try and, as he would put it, do this shit to some more. Now, it's quite interesting. And they are at least trying to piece it all together. If they can put some vehicles together, then that means that somewhere during the day, they might be able to try and get out of the city. If they would ever need to leave. However, there's the fact that out in the countryside, it might be a bit more dangerous. So. Hmm. That is something that would be, well, worth looking into. If they're able to leave the city and actually try and find another place, then it might either be more resourceful. And there's a chance that they can find a place with lesser and lesser infected. Now, with that being said, while this is going on, there is a radio broadcast. And it is, let's say, C-Team, or actually, let's say, Echo, so E-Team. They are looking into B-Team's deployments, where they were put over to, 
and the place they went to. Some of their friends, well, they're ripped apart, while others of them, they're infected. And they didn't receive proper treatment for their bites. So, it's clear as to what's happened, talking about the fact that they were possibly even ambushed, and that the truck is missing. So, we were robbed. Usually we're the one, ones taking on people's shit. Yeah, boss. Anyways, I still think it's a bit weird. Well, right, but even then... Who would have the gall to cross us? I have no idea. But I did hear something a bit interesting from some of those traders we came across. Or we're actually not too far away from a settlement. If I'm right, it might be them listing off a few places, saying that the nearest one they could check. And if they can at least find that truck, they should be aware as to what happened. Now, with that being pointed out, Inco actually does begin to tell everyone to simply begin their own things. Go get weapons and firearms. And if they need to, go get more of the ingredients. Now, with that being said, they are preparing for an ambush or an actual war. As soon as these men do come strung up to their gates, basically, with not only firearms, but some more vehicles, they begin to talk, spouting off that they believe they might have something that belongs to them. As soon as Enko actually does go on saying that they're not too sure what he's talking about, the man just begins, saying that they would like to come inside and inspect the area. One of their teams was found dead here recently, and they believe that they might have something to do with it. Inko going off to state that they don't even know who they are. In fact, their settlement has stayed afloat because they keep to themselves. They do talk to traders and other things like that, but they will not open their walls up to these men if they are not here to trade equipment. or food for firearms and medicine. Now, they also are talking about antizine. If the men want some antizine, they would have to trade them something. They did actually get some from a supply drop a couple days ago. Or, well, two to three weeks. And they did actually get food recently last week. Now, this is actually somewhat alarming. As the man asked, really. Asking if anyone ran into anyone out there. As soon as they state no, this is where things begin to get interesting. The conversation with the man doesn't really head anywhere. He just wants to come inside and see what, what they might have. As soon as he talked about ramming their vehicles into the door, and basically knocking down the wall. Enko told the man to stop. She's a member of the organization. The one that basically makes sure that they can find survivors, keep them alive, and actually make sure the supply drops will keep coming in. Now, basically that means that her and a few other people can talk on a private channel. While they're talking, they can discuss supplies that would be needed. If one area of the city needs food, that area will get food. If one area of the city needs antizine, there will be an antizine drop there. If one side of the city needs, let's say, blankets or anything like that, something that would be useful and easy, they can get it, along with weapons. Basically, at least giving survivors a fighting chance. However, these drops are a bit harder to come by, since if not all five of these people are talking, they can't perform a proper list. Plus, if there's too much of one thing, there might be too little of something else. 
so you would have to make sure it's a certain way. However, those five people always talking doesn't always work out. One of those people have been replaced before, and it was a shit show. Trying to simply get that person to agree to what they would need was hard. However, that person eventually did come around. And as far as Enco knows, the last person to be replaced on the radio for someone else was roughly about almost two years ago. Now, back to these men. As she's explaining this to the man, he doesn't care. As soon as he does go to bring up his gun, Enko is quicker. She's able to actually pull up her gun and fire off directly at the man, as people just begin to chuck these bottles over the side of the wall. And then there's Yuraka. She actually did have a few people let them let her grab onto them, and her father. Both of them are using their corks to simply just throw these things up in the air. As soon as they begin to smoke and actually start basically letting out their fumes, they will both release their corks. Basically dropping a massive amount of this stuff into one concentrated area, forcing the men out from behind their vehicles and into the open, where Hasashi begins to blow out flames in order to protect the gates. Some people trying to get away and drive away. And then there's Midoriya. He grabbed a firearm and was actually able to jump up into the air whenever he decreased his body weight. Now, he tried to make sure he can see anyone, and he didn't want anyone to get away. As soon as the vehicle began to try and speed off, and try and swerve through all the buses and vehicles and the infected in the streets, Midori took off after it. And Inko actually did go too. Her and Midoriya running at heightened speeds. Inko is making herself weigh around a pound. Of Midoriya, he's roughly around five to seven. Now, I guess the best way to explain this, the quirk working properly, as some of you are curious about it, think of it. Think of it how Ant Man's quirk, well, Ant Man's body works. Whenever he gets smaller, he gets stronger. That's because the human bones, well, they can handle a certain amount of weight. Whenever the, well, what's the best way to say it? There's a video about how Ant-Man, he can't maintain a very large size forever, but he can stay small forever. It's about, it's about the way the human body is built. We're basically built around the perfect size for our bone structure and our muscle structure to work. If we were larger and heavier, that means that bones would break easier and other things would happen. And that all these stress that we put on our body, we are used to and accustomed to. So, it's not really a very big thing, whenever you're resting. But since the human body does get lighter whenever it shrinks down, like Ant-Man, the human body is capable of stronger and faster feats. Meaning, that you basically become superhuman whenever you go to that size. I believe I just got off the topic for a long time. Anyways, now, as Inko and Midoriya are running, they're running at heightened speeds. Inko is basically chasing a car down while it's going around 80 to 90 miles. Now, the car it is armored up and somewhat smashing into vehicles as it passes by. However, it's also mowing down infected. Now, it's basically trying to swerve throughout the streets, slowing down sometimes, but it quickly accelerating back up. Inko and Midoriya basically just jumping onto vehicles and going into the air, while chasing them down. However, on a flat street, they are able to actually get them, chase the man down, and actually get to the car. Whenever Midoriya has a line of sight, he actually just begins to fire off the gun. However, as soon as he does pull the trigger, he does find out the reason why his mother does not use firearms while running. The amount of force the gun fires off into Midoriya's arm actually does send him moving backwards. Midoriya's body is too light to handle the recoil. 
and it actually does basically make him take a few steps backwards and basically try and get a running start back up again. Well, Inko is still chasing the man down. As soon as she does get to the back of the car, she is able to bring up her knife and stab it down into the metal before climbing on. The man trying to shake her off and actually get her off of the car. He tries to go into the grass uh, of, let's say, a park. As he's going through it and trying to get her off, Inko does not get off. Until eventually the man does actually hit a few things, gets sent careening out into a spin, Inko goes flying off and the car smashes into a tree. Now, with that being said, Midoriya does eventually catch up, and after running into the park, he does find his mother. She is alright, but she does actually have a wound on her arm, and she does seem a bit more dazed. He's not too sure if it's simply just her being tired or something else happening whenever he didn't see it. But he is aware as to what's going on with the vehicle. Some infected are beginning to make their way here, and actually walking closer. Inko basically running over to the door and smashing the glass with her glove. As soon as she does that, she pulls open the lock and basically just throws the door open, pulling the guy out and throwing him onto the ground, and placing her leg directly onto the guy's chest, trying to get information asking him about who they work for. We don't have to answer to you. Even then, my boss would kill me. Well, that sucks. I'll tell you one thing, though. You just tried to kill me and my family. Family? Oh, you sound surprised. This is my son, Izuku. Midoriya just bringing the gun up. <laughs> You're telling me people actually survive in this city? Long enough to have children? You sound surprised. I kind of am. And in all honesty, we didn't think there were any survivors. Once we found that out, we were shocked to learn that you basically try and carry on as if it's a normal day. That, basically, what's happening is stranger and stranger than you can understand. Infected with quirks, people having children. Fuck. Why didn't you just get out of here? Get out of here? Simple. There's a military blockade surrounding the entire country. Whenever you try and escape, or in this case, try and get through, you're quarantined then taken to the other side once it is known that you are not infected. Oh. It's useful information. Besides, every boat, plane, you name it, it either doesn't work, or you don't know how to fly it. Or there's a simple fact that it's either crashed on fire, or, most likely, People took it apart. Why would anyone take apart a plane? I have no idea. From what I know, you can make a wind turbine out of the engine. Anyways. Now, I suggest you tell me. Where are your leaders? Your boss? How many settlements have you killed? People have you killed and destroyed? The man trying to answer Inko. He's trying to be vague about it, however Inko, not having it, does go around and grab her knife. And stab it down into the man's arm. Explain to him one thing. That he is most likely going to die here if she just leaves him here. However, there is another option. Midoriya watching as his mother basically smashes the guy into the hood of the car. And after rolling up the after rolling up the pant leg of the man, she walks over and grabs an infected. She grabs it by the back of the neck and basically keeps keeps its mouth forced open. 
allowing it to bite down onto the man's leg. Before, she just stabs a knife into the back of its head and lets it fall. The man began to freak out and basically beg for his life. He doesn't want to be infected and he needs something to combat this. Enko explained to him that it's quite simple. She has a bottle of antazine. If he can tell her what she wants to know, she'll let him have it. And then he can come back with them, if he so chooses. He's basically dead without more of it. So, how about that? The guy just yelling at Inko and screaming at her. Inko telling Midoriya to simply just walk away. The two beginning to do so. Now, the man is basically begging for his life. Either begging to be shot or for some antazine. Before basically just letting it all out. Shouting to Inko that this is their location, their base, this is what his boss's name is, this is this, this is this, these are the times, the days, shifts, whatever he can even list. Basically trying to spill his heart out to Inko. And after getting some information, she tosses him a bottle. Before the two begin to walk away. And Midori does actually try and ask his mother questions about that. Now, Enko goes on stating that he should have looked a bit closer at what she did. Her confused, or Midoriya confused, my bad. Now, she says that she made it look like she let it bite down on the man. But whenever she was holding its chin, she simply allowed it to simply just get a small bite. Not enough pressure to break skin. However, enough to be believable. The man might still need the antizine, though. However, once he finds out that his little wound isn't as deep as he wants to believe it to be, then he might have a bit of a change of heart. Now, the two do get back to their settlements and find out exactly what has been happening. There are some vehicles littered around, and there are some missing. However, there is at least a lot of bodies, and a lot of infected. Inko and Midoriya actually having to jump over the wall, and get back inside their home. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing night. Catch you guys in the next part.